So this is my house. I live here with my family, my two kids and my husband and our dog, Magnus. We used to live on the same street. So we basically bought this house because it is a bigger version of our previous house. And we love our neighborhood. We're very committed to our neighborhood and our street. So we couldn't envision moving somewhere else. When you first walked in the front door, it was clear that it had been a rental. There were locks on the doors. There was a lot of hallways, a lot of doors in weird places. And really it hadn't been very well cared for. At one point this was a bedroom. So this wall had been added. This closet is coming up. But I saw things like there was already an addition on the back, so I didn't need to build one. In the basement, it's a bathroom. And then on the main floor, it was a kitchen and a bathroom combo. The really beautiful bathroom with a bidet. There are four bidets in this house. So we're going to renovate this into mud room, powder room, change the configuration, get rid of the tub, add bigger doors. And this will be a really awesome functional space for me and my family. Part of what attracted me to this house was that it already had the perfect layout for all of the spaces that we needed. It was just all the finishes, and I mean all the finishes, that needed to be removed and replaced. So originally there was a window on the side, it was kind of above the sink in the kitchen, and we talked a lot about whether or not we should close it in. But in the end, we decided it was worth closing it in because it was gonna give us better function and better storage. We enter through the back 95% of the time. So that was important to us to make sure that we had a big enough mudroom for everybody coming in the back door and then also to create a two-piece powder room back there. So we decided on a V-Lux skylight to bring a lot of light, but also still keep the function of the mudroom that we needed. The skylight actually brings in about two times more light than a vertical window would. So with the glazed back door and the skylight, we didn't lose any light, but we get much better function than we would have had we kept the window on the wall. The v -Lux skylight, first of all, it's solar powered, which is amazing. So it doesn't require any electricity. So the install is really quick and easy. And then on top of that, it opens. So it enables us to release the hot air that gathers in the skylight when it gets really hot in the summer. We also added a room darkening blind that's also solar powered. So when it's really, really hot, we can close the blind over, which prevents the mudroom from getting too hot. I feel like skylights in the 80s got a really bad rap because they were leaking like crazy. But the v -Lux skylights have three layers of water protection, so you're not gonna have any leaks. And then we also knew we needed mudroom storage. So we have a coat closet and a bench, and we have a, like a command center area. It has like a bulletin board with pocket doors, a mail drop charging station. It's kind of your all-in-one coming in the house where you leave everything. We do this in a lot of clients' houses, and it's really helpful to have a spot for the junk that you're carrying when you walk in the back door so it doesn't end up on the kitchen island. And then on the opposite side of the wall behind the powder room, we created a space for a stackable washer and dryer. So we have an awesome LG wash tower that plays a lovely song when it finishes the cycle. My husband quite likes the song. And it means that we just have access to our laundry all the time. It's in a super convenient location. So it's a cleaning closet in a smallish space on the main floor, which is super accessible. Obviously we needed a much larger kitchen than the tiny kitchen that was in the house when we bought it. So we took the space between the mud room and what is now the dining room and made that all of our kitchen. I am obsessed with function and we thought a lot about how we were gonna make this kitchen really functional for us. As our kids are getting older, we wanted to make sure that they would be able to do some stuff on their own and you know, they wanna make toast and make their own breakfast. So on the side beside the window, we created a little like breakfast station with the microwave. We keep our bread over there. We have our appliance garage on that side coffee maker. Then on the other side of the kitchen is kind of our main work area. So we have a stove centered on the wall, two big expanses of countertop on either side, and then our island in the middle that has our sink and our dishwasher and our garbage and recycling in it. So originally we planned to have stools at the island, but then once we moved in, we realized no one is ever gonna sit there because the dining table was right there and it's so much more comfortable to sit in a chair than a stool. Ergonomic fact, nobody really likes sitting on a stool with their feet raised, it's not that comfortable. So we ended up closing it in and adding more storage on the back of the island, which actually gave us a great spot for our little mini vacuum and our booth. And then gave us another opportunity to add more of the reeded detail that we had on the ends of the island. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Right after I bought the house, I purchased two things. The kitchen faucet, which was a faucet I always wanted, and the little sconces in the kitchen that have teeny tiny alabaster shades. I kind of had the idea that from the beginning, it's an older home and a lot of the original charm was still here. So I wanted to keep a lot of that and really make it feel fresh and updated. And I liked the idea of bringing in some more mid-century style lighting along with that. So the two pieces I purchased were like a traditional bridge faucet with a side spray and like a mid-century looking sconce. 
I love the mix of materials. I think it looks a little more interesting than being all the same countertop everywhere. And also considering we have a slab backsplash, if we did the slab backsplash on the counters all the same, that's five surfaces that are the same. It starts to look like a lot. And this way we have the super durable, super hard wearing Caesar stone on either side of the stove and where the kids are working. So there's no way they can mess that up. It's indestructible. And then on our island, we have marble, but I don't mind the patina of marble. That's kind of the beauty of it. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't end up becoming you know, an eyesore and that everywhere it was getting ruined. I don't wanna to have to tell my children not to put a lemon on the counter because they will put a lemon on the counter and we have to accept that. Dining room. So the dining room is a big room. It's right in the middle of the house. In our previous house, we had a little banquette in our kitchen, which where we ate at 99% of the time. And then we had a dining room that we never used. So when thinking about this house, we really just wanted to have one dining room that we could use all the time that would be big enough for big gatherings, but also where we would sit on a daily basis. The shape of this room is a square. So a giant round table works really well to fill the space, but there's still tons of clearance around it. And my eventual dream is to build a custom banquette in the window. I haven't done it yet. So right now I'm living without a banquette, which is shocking. I love a banquette and one day I'm going to have one. I've already drawn it. I just haven't had it built yet. From the very beginning, the stair wall was a wall. There was no railing. It was a full wall that came all the way down. So one of the first things we did was remove all that. And then I thought for a long time about what to do with that wall. We kept thinking we were just gonna put a railing. And then pretty much at the last minute, I decided we needed to panel the whole wall and make the door to the basement hidden. It was always awkward because it's a bit narrow and it always seemed tight and odd. But by paneling that entire wall and making the door hidden in the wall, it just turned what looked like a funny architectural detail into like an architectural gem and a beautiful detail that really highlights the age of the house and looks like it could be original. So the living room originally had a fireplace. It was a coal burning fireplace, which we converted to gas. Originally, I was gonna reuse the mantle that came with the house, but I was struggling because the mantle upstairs, it's so beautiful, and the mantle downstairs wasn't as beautiful as the one upstairs. So in the end, I decided to do a new stone mantle, which I love, which works really well with the curved insert and feels like it might be original to the house, even though it was added, and really creates a focal point in the living room. As much as I like the main floor to be open concept, I like having a separate living room that feels cozy. I don't wanna hang out in a big space. I wanna cook and chat in a big space, but I wanna snuggle up in front of the fire and read a book in a smaller, more intimate spot. So we kept the walls of the living room and we have the existing pocket doors that go between the living room and the dining room. So the front hall originally had the classic Toronto vestibule where you step in and it's like three feet deep and then there's another door. Okay, so this is the teeny tiny foyer, which we're gonna make bigger. So we got rid of that and shifted the whole thing to create a long hallway. It has checkerboard floors, which I love. And we put a beautiful tall but shallow cabinet in there to hold our shoes and our mitts and our hats. And then we just have hooks on the paneling. We added beadboard paneling to the foyer and then wallpaper that wraps all the way over the ceiling. Just thinking that it was a nice moment to add some interest and really set the tone for the rest of the house. We did the whole renovation in about six months and we did new floors, full new electrical, new HVAC, new kitchen, three bathrooms. So a lot of work, but it turned out so well and we're so thrilled and really happy to be living in a slightly bigger house, but on the same street in the same neighborhood. <laughs>